A lot of people are saying that mining the threefold token uh, by setting up servers is not profitable. But I'm going to show you why that is definitely wrong and how for the same amount of money as buying the official Titan server, you can definitely get an ROI that is going to make this all worthwhile. Um, let's take a quick look at the official server they sell. It's about $1,000 US, uh, 4 core CPU, 32 gigs RAM, and 1 terabyte SSD. You should, you know, buy it to support them, but by making your own, you can very easily, see down here, make something that is almost twice as profitable for the same amount of money. Um, by simply buying your own components and putting them together yourself. And we're gonna do that by doubling their RAM from 32 to 64, quadrupling the solid state from 1,000 or what's going to be one terabyte to four terabytes. Um, and that takes us from about 40,000 tokens to 70, almost 79,000 tokens. And I think that is over a five year period. Um, now, the profitability of this is of course entirely dependent on the token price. They automatically fill in a dollar after five years who knows? It could be five dollars. It could be two cents. You just don't know. But even saying a five-year price of four cents, which is what it is right now, and frankly, I think it's probably going to go up from here. You will see that even the ROI then is just a little over a year. That's not you know that's not great, but it's not going to you know break the bank. You you'll get your money back. It just might take a little longer than you want. Um, helium miners probably have a similar ROI and Ethereum up until recently probably had a similar ROI. Uh, but even just upping that a little bit to a modest 10 cents quickly makes it definitely a relatively safe thing to do. And putting that to a dollar makes it a no brainer call up all your friends and get them all to set one up deal. So I'm going to show you how to build your own. It's really easy and I think it's fun. I'll go over, over the individual parts um, to, to put this all together. Um, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta choose the computer you're basing this off of and used office equipment is pretty much always the cheapest. Uh, the Lenovo Think Centers come in four sizes and this tiny size right here is uh, pretty powerful and small enough that you can throw it right by your router and it's not gonna hardly draw any electricity like 40 watts and won't get in the way or make any noise. Um, and of course the bigger ones are even cheaper and they can hold more drives, so it just depends what you're doing. Um, here at my house, I have a big one filled with drives, but the ones I put at friends and family, I give them a tiny. I don't think it's reasonable to throw a big t uh, tower in their house. Um, Dell Optiplex is too, very similar. A little bit less common and a little bit more expensive, but they are almost identical and a good option. Uh, now, instead of calling them tiny, these ones are called micro. You can see who copied who. And Intel Nukes, I have one running as well. Um, they're definitely more expensive, at least on average, about $200 more. Um, just note that they come in two sizes, a short size like right here, and a tall size. Tall size takes a, a, a M2 drive and a two and a half inch drive. Uh, so it's definitely a better choice, it's more versatile because those two and a half inch SSDs are almost half the price as an M2. So you can see there's a few options for your PC chassis. Next thing you need to consider is the CPU in there. You need four cores, eight threads, and the ability to support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. You can see there's a lot that these are gonna come with that look promising that don't work. For instance, the i7-4770 is a very common processor in these and it does not support enough RAM. The one I recommend that you find because it's just just old enough to be affordable and has all the good specs is the i7-6700T. Four cores and supports 64 gigabytes of RAM. Note it also uses DDR4. DDR3 RAM in this amount of memory is going to be extremely expensive. This is what all seven of my servers are running right here. When you go to shop for these, I, re I recommend you go to eBay where a lot of people liquidate their um, 
old office uh, equipment. Uh, my favorite search term just to use is uh, Lenovo Tiny i7 or Dell Optiplex Micro i7. And you'll get a lot uh, from under 200 to over 300 and that's all because of what they come with. You want to find something that is basically as bare bones as possible while not ditching the CPU because you're going to be paying for this useless solid state drive or a useless amount of 16 gigabytes of RAM. So if you shop around you'll find something that has no operating system, no drives and just a little bit of RAM you could sell or toss out and the CPU that you need. Shopping around you should not have to pay more than about 225 for your computer. Now there's a tons of models so like while M900 Tiny is definitely the most prevalent and in my opinion the most fitting one there's a lot of other ones out there that can work and sometimes are really cheap just keep a close eye out for instance the M700 Tiny does everything you need but if you notice their M2 drive is a SATA interface as compared to the now standard PCIe interface so just take a close look at what you buy or you're going to end up buying the wrong SSDD and end up chasing the problem for a couple of days like I did. Note that when you do look at the platform specs for whatever you buy or preferably before you buy that they're typically going to say 32 gigabytes max which is actually less than what this CPU supports. Don't fret that, it runs on 64 just fine. When these spec sheets were made, 64 gigs of RAM was not something that was common in the consumer market. Here's a good example of some I bought. Um, this person dumped 24 of these at about 209, 210 bucks a piece, and they combined shipping. That was a great deal. You just have to be a little patient, and you will get what you need off of eBay for your uh, PC server chassis. Now, of course, you need to fill your... Uh, PC with all the components needed to maximize your profitability. The most important, well the two most important things are going to be your storage and your RAM. A four terabyte two and a half inch solid state drive is definitely the best value. The M2 drives, unless you already have them, are almost twice as expensive so steer clear of those. This uh, Samsung Q70 has a really high uh, TBW, so it's going to last a long time in a server, and it's typically a good value. This price varies a lot. I just bought some of these for $320 on eBay, and I bought some in here for about this price too. Definitely the best price per terabyte currently out there. Note that while hard drives are much cheaper, they really don't return a lot for your money. Um, how the formula is currently written is a hard drive gets you about, in this example, about 300 unitless units there, and um, a solid state drive is 1200, so it's four times as potent as a hard drive. Really not cost effective to use hard drives unless you already have them laying around. There really is no answer to your RAM other than these G scale rip jaws. Uh, two 32 gigabyte sticks. I uh, looks like they went out of stock since I loaded this page, but it is $200 on here on Newegg. That is a lot, but check out what happens when I have that. We're looking at 79,000 tokens. I take that down to 32, 51. One of the most cost effective ways to greatly increase how many tokens you're earning. I have had trouble, especially in Intel nukes, with Linux systems crashing when running headless. Plugging in these cheap little dummy plugs emulates a monitor on your server and stops it from crashing. I don't know if the Lenovo Think Center's crash without these, but I know my nuke does. These PCs are going to be deployed for a while. Pick up some CR2032 lithium batteries to replace that BIOS battery. Almost none of these used office PCs come with power adapters. 
Unfortunately, they're very cheap. Secondhand market, uh, not secondhand, um, non OEM market. You definitely don't need more than 65 watts. And ignore all this mumbo jumbo because you're never going to see what you need. All you need to look for is that yellow plug. That's all you need. Yellow plug, Lenovo, 65 watts, you're in business. One annoying thing is these used machines only run dual port video outputs. I don't have anything that runs on that, so you have to pick up a $2 HDMI adapter for each server you're running. Now you have an idea of all the components that you're going to need, so we're going to just show you how to slap all that together if you haven't built a PC before. Super easy. Put all your components in a tiny Lenovo. Just remove the screw from the back, which is should be right there, and slide the top forward and pop it off. You absolutely have to clean these when you get them because they are extremely dusty. Undo this, this, and this screw, and your whole fan should pop right off. You're going to have to take a Q-tip and loosen up all the dust right here. And it can be a lot of dust. I've seen these completely clogged. Once it's all loosened up, either use your air compressor or some canned air to blow all that out. Screw that back on there. Um, you see I've already put in one drive here. These use plastic toggles. You do not need a screw to put on this drive. You simply carefully attempt to pull this up if it's already been locked down. Put this in and close it down. No screws needed. Your RAM goes right here. You just push that in just like that. This is your BIOS battery. I've already replaced this one. You pull back that gold tab right there and lift the battery right out. Do not force it from this end or you will break the holder and have to glue it back in. This is the Wi-Fi module, which you won't be using. And for this big one, big build I have here for a whole six terabytes, I have two plus this four terabyte drive that I just push in right there. Sometimes they will come with a caddy if it already had a drive in there. Use it if you have it so it doesn't flop around but because these drives don't have any moving parts they should be okay on support it. If you do happen to drop it you should make sure that this drive did not pop out. Really not a lot to that when you're done with it, just slide that top back on and put the screw on. Um, next video, we'll install all the software on here and connect it to the threefold network.